Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the St. John Region Chamber of Commerce first virtual annual general meeting and the Chamber's 201st AGM. My name is Carol Cunningham and I'm the Director of Events for the Chamber. I want to say a special welcome to Mayor Don Darling for joining us. The Mayor is a big supporter of the Chamber and we are pleased to have him with us today. We are also excited to have with us the Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer with Canadian Pacific as our guest speaker. He will be more formally introduced once we have finished the business at hand. Before we begin, we will be asking for approval on reports being presented. A polling chart will appear on your screen. When the motion is made, you will be asked to vote on the motion by clicking as to whether you are in favor or opposed. Our first item of business is to establish that we have a quorum. Being satisfied that there are a sufficient number of members of the St. John Region Chamber present and there having been proper notice circulated to all members, I declare this meeting duly constituted to consider the business to be placed before it. The next item on the agenda is the adoption of the minutes of the annual meeting. The Chamber's 200th annual general meeting was held on April 5, 2019 at the St. John Trade and Convention Center. Copy of those minutes have been circulated to you via link prior to our meeting. A motion to accept the minutes as they appear before you were moved by Jim Quinn and seconded by Stephanie Bell. All in favor to approve the minutes as they appear before you, please signify by clicking aye and those opposed nay. The motion is carried. We can now turn our attention to the reports. First is the committee report. This past year has been a busy year for the chamber and many of our volunteers. The report of various committees were distributed to you in advance of this meeting via link. In the interest of time, Jim Quinn moved the acceptance of the committee report on behalf of all the chairpersons, and it was seconded by Rob Hutton. All those in favor of the motion, accepting the committee reports as they appear before you, please signify by clicking aye, and those opposed on nay. The motion is carried. I would like now to call upon Jim Quinn, Chair of the Nominating Committee and President and CEO of the Port to please present the nominating report. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. As provided in the existing bylaws, a nominating committee was established earlier this year to develop a slate of candidates to serve on our board of directors and for the various officer positions. That report was circulated to all chamber members last month, along with an invitation for further nominations of candidates. No additional nominations were received prior to the deadline of June 10. Those who will serve as members of the board of directors of the St. John Region Chamber of Commerce are Chris McDonald, Dr. Jeff Steves, Andy Carson, Ray Robinson, Chris Hall, and Christine Gilliard. Elected to serve as officers of the St. John Region Chamber of Commerce and members of the Executive Committee for the coming year are Deidre Wade, Chairperson, Dean Mullen, First Vice Chairperson, Mike Corbett, Treasurer, Paul Gordon, Grand Bay Westfield Vice President or Vice Chairperson, Derek Stanford, Canada Cases Valley Vice Chairperson, and we will determine at a later time the West Side Vice Chairperson, and myself, Jim Quinn, as immediate past chairperson. Please note, due to COVID-19, the chair of the Board of Directors term has been extended for an additional term as requested by the nominating committee. So that is the report of the nominating committee. Could we have a mover for the report? Uh, Derek Stanford and seconded by Stephanie Bell that the committee report be accepted as presented. 
All those in favor on the motion to accept the nominating committee report, please signify by clicking aye, and those opposed, nay. The motion is carried. Next is our chair's report. I would like to ask Deidre Wade, chair of the St. John Region Chamber of Commerce and partner at Cox and Palmer to please present her report. Good morning. As we come together this morning, albeit virtually, we have the incredible opportunity to reflect upon the accomplishments and celebrate the successes of the St. John Region Chamber of Commerce and our members during 2019. Our bicentennial year was one that presented significant opportunities and our accolades over the past 12 months are truly the successes of our members and our business community as a whole. While we currently find ourselves in challenging and unique circumstances, we must not let this define what can be easily considered one of the most successful years in our history. Last year's AGM on April 5th occurred exactly 200 years to the day that a group of local business leaders met at Cody's Coffee House on the southeast corner of King and Prince William Streets to form an association to correspond with similar groups in the other parts of Canada and in England. Following the 200th AGM, we were pleased to showcase the extensive history of the Chamber in, in the St. John region and to have Premier Blaine Higgs address our celebratory luncheon. In September, we welcomed the representatives of the many Chambers of Commerce from across the country as the St. John Region Chamber hosted the Canadian Chamber of Commerce Annual General Meeting and Convention. This unique opportunity for the Chamber brought nearly 400 delegates to the St. John Region and contributed an estimated half a million dollars in economic, economic benefits for our local businesses. Without a doubt, this year's conference was a major success for the Chamber, our members, and the region as a whole. We were incredibly honoured in October when the 2009 Canadian Chamber of Commerce Annual General Meeting was awarded the Large Convention of the Year Award by Hospitality St. John. The Canadian Chamber of Commerce Annual General Meeting was also the setting for the St. John Region Chamber's 200th Anniversary Gala Celebration Evening, a glamorous, well-attended event showcasing the Chamber's 200 years of service to the business community. This year, the Chamber was re-accredited with distinction by the Chamber Accreditation Council of Canada. Accreditation is a formal acknowledgement that the member chamber has met rigorous standards of policy, service and performance as established by the Chamber Accreditation Council of Canada. We consider this accreditation as a significant vote of confidence in the work of the chamber over the past number of years. Throughout our bicentennial year, we were incredibly delighted to welcome 85 businesses as new members of the chamber, a record setting yearly increase. We think it is also important to highlight the fact that nearly 94% of our members come from small businesses, being businesses with one to 99 employees. Among, among our many guests this past year, I would highlight presentations from Alberta Premier Jason Kenney, Canadian Consul General and former New Brunswick Premier David Allward, the US Consul General Kevin Skillen, Minister of the Environment and Local Government Jeff Carr, Minister of Service New Brunswick Sherry Wilson, the Leader of the Official Opposition Kevin Vickers, Mayor Don Darling, and New Brunswick's Auditor General Kim McPherson. Throughout this past year, the Chamber facilitated regional dialogue in playing an important role in promoting collaboration and long-term solutions for the role of the Greater St. John Region. The Chamber advocated and continues to advocate 
that the greater St. John area must work together outwardly and inward and inwardly demonstrate we are a smart, innovative community. Success, success in this initiative will take time and the commitment of residents, businesses and government working together with a common goal in mind. As our 200th anniversary year comes to a close, I would like to express my thanks and appreciation to our departing board members, Rob Conley, Rob Hutton, and Cynthia Goodwin, and extend a warm welcome to our new board members, Christine Gilliland from Way Up Strategic Solutions, Chris Hall from Port St. John, and Ray Robinson from St. John Energy. While we celebrated many successes over the past year, we would not be able to accomplish any of them without the incredible team of individuals working behind the scenes at the chamber. David, Dylan, Carol, and Randy, without your hard work and dedication, none of the incredible successes that helped to shape our bicentennial year would have been possible. On behalf of the Board of Directors and our members, I want to say an enormous thank you for everything that you have done and will continue to do. The four of you truly helped to make this historic year everything that it was. The last few months have been challenging for all of us, and the Chamber understands that your interests, needs, and priorities have been impacted as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. pandemic. We have all been forced to adapt our operations to these ever changing <laughs> times and we have been inspired by the creative methods by which our members have pivoted to the current situation we take our responsibilities to our members seriously now more so than ever as we continue to navigate these ever-changing times know that the priorities of the St. John Region Chamber will always remain the same and that we will continue to always support and advocate for our membership. Our bicentennial year has been one which has been dominated by the successes and accomplishments of our organization and our members as a whole. As we celebrate these successes of the past year, we should always remember that these accolades are a benefit to the region that we call home and will help to sustain and grow our communities for decades to come. Thank you for joining us today. And now I would like to pass it over to Carol for a motion to approve the chair's report. Thank you, Deirdre. A motion is made to accept the chair's report and it has been seconded by Dean Mullen. All those in favor to accept the chair's report as presented Please signify by clicking aye, and those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Next on the agenda is the Treasurer's Report. I would like to ask Dean Mullen, partner with Jameson Mullen, who is our first Vice Chair and our current Treasurer, to present his report. Good morning. The St. John Regional Chamber of Commerce financial goal is to ensure sustainability, growth, and financial security. Success in these goals allows the Chamber to provide services that increase value to you, the members. With this goal in mind, and focusing on getting more of every dollar spent, 2019 saw increased pressure on the Chamber to ensure that events are well planned, new opportunities are capitalized on, and existing models adjusted because as David always tells us there are a lot of different groups that are putting on events and we need to ensure our events are timely for our members efficient in their delivery and meaningful in their impact to our members with respect to our financial results for 2019 our external auditors Pete Saunders Doyle have completed an audit of the, audit of the 2019 financial statements and have issued an unqualified audit report with respect to 2019 direct activity, the Chamber experienced a small operational surplus of approximately $6,000. This is a decrease from 2019 of approximately $28,000. This is related, primarily related to a decreased level of contribution 
earn from our events as compared to 2018. However, because of our continual efforts to ensure our reporting is accurate and on a switch to a new accounting system, certain amounts were identified during the year, it, identified as not being properly removed in the in prior periods. As a result, the 2019 financial statements reflect a cumulative adjustment uh, in 2019 of approximately $26,000, which results in accounting loss for 2019 of approximately $20,000. The chamber generates its revenue primarily from two sources, memberships and special events. The membership revenue has decreased slightly to 204,000, but our special events increased to 450, 450,000, a $24,000 increase. Obviously our events are an important part of what the chamber does and how it continues to provide meaningful support to our members. I would encourage every member to take advantage of the events and contact the office should you have any suggestions for new events. With respect to costs, staff continue to monitor and reduce expenses whenever and wherever possible without impacting services provided to members. This focus on the expenses on the details allows us the ability to capitalize on opportunities as they present themselves, which we can offer to our members for increased service. At the end of the fiscal year, the chamber had cash and investments of approximately $194,000. Of this amount, $40,000 is internally restricted to ensure the financial stability of the organization. The remaining $154,000 is unrestricted and available to the organization for its general operating needs and assists in its ability to capitalize on future opportunities. This is my final year as treasurer of the chamber. And I'd like to thank the staff for their dedication to ensure every dollar is spent in the best way to improve the services of the chamber to its members. And I'd also like to thank the board for its support and its important role in the financial oversight of the organization. At this time, I'd like to make a motion that the treasurer's report be ex accepted. Thank you, Dean. A motion has been made to accept the treasurer's report, seconded by Mike Corbett. All those in favor to accept the treasurer's report, please signify by clicking aye, and those opposed nay. Motion is carried. Next is the CEO's report. Would David Duplessis, CEO with the Chamber, please present your report? Good morning, everyone. I too would like to add my personal welcome with everyone that is here with us today. Now, as we've heard from Deirdre and Dean, it really has been an unprecedented year at the Chamber. We've had many successes, some of which you've heard about this morning, some you may have read about in various media stories and still others that are part of the collective experiences that we've all shared. 2019 represented a milestone year, not only for us, but for the entire Chamber of Commerce movement as well. As one of the oldest Chambers of Commerce or Boards of Trade in the entire country, we have survived because we've been able to remain relevant in uncertain times with challenging economic conditions. This was no easy task, as you can imagine. We have survived because of our members. Our members have survived, and they are making their mark on our city, our province, and the rest of the world. This became even more evident as we began our research into the story of our 200-year-old chamber. We spent many hours going through files, newspaper clippings, minutes of meetings, publications, and our archives that are stored at the New Brunswick Museum. I wonder if when Lachlan Davison first met with other local business people at Cody's Coffee House to form our association, I wonder if they would have been able to imagine that we would still be here two centuries later. Whether it was creating Canada's first chartered bank or inventing the world's first steam whistle at Partridge Island, we are a city and a region of innovators and believers. When St. John's very own Mabel Thompson became Canada's first female golf champion in 1902, and Robert Merwini invented the hydraulic system for dump trucks in 1920, they persevered because of the very same spirit and drive that fuels an entrepreneurial culture that exists to this very day. 
Now, if we fast forward to 2019, and we see members continuing with this tradition of excellence. National Bank performed a major upgrade to the facilities on King Street. Port St. John and the St. John Airport saw infrastructure improvements, and Irving Oil welcomed employees to a brand new home office in the heart of uptown St. John. Longtime members, Angus Miller Insurance, celebrated their 100th anniversary. FCS Flooring and Concrete Solutions celebrated 65 years. Canaport LNG, 10 years in St. John, Natasha's wedding events expanded their portfolio venues, and Italian by Night was featured on the cover of Costco's national publication. As we enter our 201st year in business, never in my wildest dreams would I have ever guessed that I would be speaking with you over the internet to our first ever virtual AGM. But this is not the first time that the Chamber or the Board of Trade has entered a new year with such uncertainty. We've survived two world wars, multiple skirmishes, played a major role in confederation and maritime union discussions, and we saw the building of our nation's railway system. And this COVID too shall we survive. We will continue to represent and be champions for business in our region, and we will continue to press all levels of government for policies that help our members survive and grow. And finally, working with our partners and stakeholders, we will continue to play a major role in the economic and social well-being of our vibrant region. We've already seen many of our members pivot and reinvent themselves in a positive way in order to adapt. In fact, one such member, Rogue Coffee, has just this week won the Canadian Chamber of Commerce Resilience Grant of $10,000. And it's this kind of creativity and drive that will help our members evolve to whatever the new normal will become. I thank you for your continued support because we are all in this together. I would now move to accept the CEO's report. A motion is made to accept the CEO's report as presented. It was moved by Derek Stanford and seconded by Mike Corbett. All those in favor to accept the CEO's report, please signify by clicking aye and those opposed nay. The motion's carried. Thank you everyone for your reports. This ends our formal portion of the annual general meeting. I would now like to ask David Duplessis, CEO of the Chamber, to introduce our guest speaker today. David. Thank you, Carol. It is a real pleasure to introduce Mr. Nadine Vellani today. I have a long history with Canadian Pacific in my family, so it's a personal pleasure to welcome Mr. Vellani to our AGM. For four generations, my family on both sides, uncles, father, grandparents, all have worked for Canadian Pacific. So it's a very important part of my family history. Mr. Nadine Villani is the Executive Vice President, Chief Financial Officer of Canadian Pacific Railway. Mr. Villani joined Canadian Pacific in March of 2013 and served as Vice President Investor Relations before becoming Chief Financial Officer in September of 2016. Prior to CP, Nadim spent 15 years at Canadian National, where he worked in a variety of positions, strategic and financial planning, investor relations, sales and marketing, and the office of the president and CEO. Nadim is a key member of the senior management team responsible, helping plan the long-term strategic direction of the company. Other responsibilities include financial planning, investor relations, reporting and accounting systems, as well as pension, treasury, and tax. Nadine holds a Bachelor of Economics degree from Western University and an MBA in Finance and International Business from Miguel. Nadine was recognized by institutional investors as a member of the inaugural 2020 All Canada Executive Team. He was ranked as the top CFO in the capital goods industrial sector as voted on by buy side analysts, money managers, and sell side researchers. He was also named Canada's CFO for the year 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Nadine Vellani to our first ever virtual AGM to deliver our keynote speech. Welcome, Nadine. Good morning. Thanks, David, for those kind words. And and uh, it was very uh, interesting not only to, to hear about the long history of railroading in your roots and in your family, but also uh, hearing the end of your remarks and about the long and successful history of the chamber. And, and we too, dealing with uh, this new reality and had our first ever virtual AGM. So uh, interesting times we're, we're, all, uh, we're all dealing with. Um, 
As David mentioned, my name is Nadim Vellani, and I serve as the Executive Vice President and CFO of Canadian Pacific. It really is an honor for me to speak with this group this morning and share with you just how excited CP is to be re-entering the Atlantic Canada market. While I would love to be in beautiful St. John, I'm still happy to join you virtually as we all continue to deal with the extraordinary, extraordinary challenges uh, related to COVID-19. Before I get into our return to Atlantic Canada, I just wanted to take a moment and, and tell you a little bit about, about our people, the 12,000 plus CP family of railroaders. We have weathered the COVID-19 storm as well as any business could, and I'm truly proud of our entire CP family for their individual and collective efforts. As an essential service provider, CP continued to operate fully, while many across North America worked from home. The vast majority of our workforce has remained on the front lines, delivering freight critical to the North American communities and the world. We have an expression, CP proud. We used to celebrate their efforts, and I've never been prouder of the CP team. At CP, we operate with five foundations in mind, controlling costs, developing people, optimizing assets, operating safely, and providing service. Our foundations ground us in the principles of our operating model, which we refer to as precision scheduled railroading. Our company values of accountability, diversity, and pride drive our actions, foster respect, and inspire our journey towards excellence. Our people and our culture define us and propel us forward. As a CFO, I'm in regular contact with shareholders and analysts, and I can tell you our culture is noticed and celebrated by those who continue to invest in this company. Our culture is what sets us apart from our peers and other companies. I think fundamentally understanding who we are and what drives us is important for today's session. As we start to grow our presence in this region, you too will come to value our family of CP railroaders. For those who are not familiar with our history, I'll share with you that CP operated our main line into and out of St. John in the late 1880s until the early 1990s. By the early 90s, the lines from Sherbrooke to New Brunswick were determined to be uneconomical, and the leaders of the day made the hard decision to sell those portions of the network to insulate CP from economic losses. From that time until 2019, the former CP line was owned by a number of different short lines, most recently operated as the Central Maine and Quebec Railway. As such, the most obvious question for me to address today is why CP decided to purchase this line and re-enter Eastern Canada. The answer is multifaceted, and to fully understand what we hope to accomplish in the future, I'd like to take a minute and tell you a little bit more about what's happened at CP over the last 10 years. More specifically, I'll take everyone back to 2012. At that time, CP was widely regarded as the worst performing railroad of the seven class one railroads in North America. A New York-based activist shareholder named Bill Ackman came up with an idea that he, if he could convince Hunter Harrison, who had retired from CN and was believed to be the most successful railroader CEO in, in history, to come out of retirement, he could reinvigorate Canada's railroad, oldest and, and uh, original transcontinental railroad. In May of 2012, Mr. Ackman's vision came to reality. He convinced CP shareholders to vote for change, and Hunter eventually became CEO. Over the course of the next five years, CP went through a transformational change. We hired a new management team, including our current CEO, Keith Creel. I joined a few weeks later and many other senior leaders that decided to join the team. We led the company through a major reorganization and came out as the best run railroad in North America. In January of 2017, Hunter retired from CP and Keith became our CEO. With that change of CEO also came a new mandate, sustainable, profitable growth. During the 2017 to 2020 timeframe, we successfully grew faster than the industry. As we turn the page to 2020, growth for CP will now come in part from us entering new markets, and we couldn't be more excited to be back in Atlantic Canada, working closely with Mr. Irving, a very strategic stakeholder, to deliver a best-in-class rail service directly to and from the city and Port of St. John. CP is extremely fortunate to have it as our connection, J.D. Irving, whose Eastern Main Railway and New Brunswick Southern Railway 
connect New Brunswick shipments to CMQ in Maine. I am very confident that their team will be a source of great strength as we refine our service offerings. Over the next three years, CP plans to invest at least $90 million to upgrade CMQ's track infrastructure in Maine and Quebec. Track upgrades are underway as we speak, and the by the fourth quarter, we'll be able to offer 24-hour service between St. John and Montreal. CP New Brunswick Southern Railway and Eastern Main Railway routing in this corridor is 200 miles shorter than our competitors. It's a compelling advantage. It means customers that might not have considered rail in the past have good reason to take another look. For 14 consecutive years, CP has been the safest railroad in North America, according to Federal Railroad Administration reportable train accident frequency. Safety is foundational at CP. Our CP safety culture comes from our investment in robust track and other critical rail infrastructure. CP has committed to spending $1.6 billion on capital system-wide this year, and we remain committed to our capital spending despite the challenges brought on by COVID-19. In fact, we're the only railroad that's going to continue to maintain that our level of, of capital investments uh, since prior to the, the pandemic hitting. As it relates to the Port of St. John, we feel we have discovered a true diamond in the rough. It is a deep water, congestion-free Atlantic Ocean port with a top-notch container terminal operator in DP World. We work with them in other locations as well and have a, a long uh, history working together. When you consider the value of this port and add CP's coast-to-coast -coast network and precision scheduled railroading model, the potential for growth is enormous. From a strategic routing perspective, I believe companies in places like Montreal, Toronto, and Chicago will choose our new routing because it offers the most direct rail link to Atlantic Canada. It offers them a compelling transportation product, it grows CP's business, JD Irving's business, and it creates economic activity and jobs in St. John. It's a win-win-win proposition. It also supports the St. John Port Authority's seven-year, $205 million dollar modernization that's now underway. A new service will provide value for businesses in St. John and across Atlantic Canada. Even businesses not located on rail can take advantage of this new routing by using NBSR's distribution and reload facilities in St. John, as well as the container terminal at Port St. John. We see opportunities across all commodity segments, and we have already converted new business in intermodal, automotive, horse products, energy, in bulk. In closing, I'd like to reemphasize just how excited we are at CP to be back in Atlantic Canada with the acquisition of CMQ. Our, our entire organization is working hard to ensure our new service will be well received by both shippers and receivers, and that over time we create a new Atlantic gateway and transportation ecosystem right here in St. John. We look forward to servicing, to serving in Atlantic Canada and to adding value in everything we do here, from safely and efficiently moving freight to supporting the economy, the community. I look forward to participating in future events, and hopefully it's next time it's in person. Thank you again for your time. Well, thank you very much, Nadine. We're, we too are excited at the investments that Canadian Pacific has planned, and we know that the rail and port connections uh, from and to St. John have been very instrumental in our uh, economic success for the last uh, few hundred years. So it's exciting to see those connections being made again and offering service direct from St. John to Montreal and Toronto. As a small thank you gift for speaking with us today, we are making a donation to the St. John Boys and Girls Club an organization that helps the children in our region. So as a special thank you to Canadian Pacific, we will be making a donation in your name. I would like to thank everyone for participating in our first ever virtual AGM. Thank you to our board of directors for their support. Thank you to our executive. In particular, I would like to thank Deirdre Wade and Dean Mullen for continuously being available when we need their support, talking us off the ledge as well. And once again, thank you to our membership. Your support over the last number of years and indeed 200 years is instrumental in our success. And we thank you. Once again, thank you everyone for attending. This meeting is adjourned.